From the ages of 13 to 17, there was only one guitar pedal that I really wanted, and that was the Roland GR55. For those who don't know, the Roland GR55 is a guitar synth pedal that can emulate the sounds of other guitars, synths, drums, bass, trumpet, you name it, it can do a ton of stuff using MIDI. I thought all these features and sounds were so cool and I always dreamed of owning one. I used to watch demos for this unit after school all the time. I thought it was a super cool piece of gear and I really wanted it. However, as I got older, my enthusiasm for synth guitar pedals just disappeared. It felt like it was almost overnight that I just stopped caring about them. It was kind of strange considering how much I wanted one for so long. It's like I turned 18 and I just stopped caring. In 2022, one of my good friends from high school messaged me and had some questions about the Boss SY1. The Boss SY1 is a super compact guitar synth pedal that was put out a couple years ago. He told me that he wanted to get one for his band because they didn't have a keyboardist and he wanted to try fill out the sound a bit more. He asked for my opinion and honestly I told him to stay away from it. I essentially told him that I thought they were a gimmick and not worth the money. But he didn't listen to me and he bought it and he absolutely loved it. He thought it sounded great and was able to make it work with the band. When he was telling me how great he felt this pedal was, I felt my hatred towards it go down. I realized I was being a hater for no real reason. I never tried it and I used to want a GR55 for so long. Why did I become this way? I thought it would be a really cool idea to rent one of these pedals and see how well it worked for me and my workflow. So that's what I did. I've rented the Boss SY1 for one week and I'm going to see how well it works with my workflow, how inspiring I find it to be, how it sounds, and of course, do I think it's a gimmick. So are synth pedals a gimmick? Let's find out. So what is a synth guitar pedal? Well, believe it or not, synth guitar pedals have been around for almost 50 years, if not longer. Based on what I could find, the first guitar synth pedal was a Roland GR500. This came out in 1977. This pedal had a bunch of different synthesizer sounds in it and was controlled by a guitar that had a special pickup in it that when connected to the pedal using a 24 pin cable would convert the signal into a synthesizer sound. This was before MIDI so I don't know the proper terminology. This was a huge moment for guitar and honestly music gear in general. Being able to turn your guitar into a synth was something no one had ever really done before. A lot of the boundary pushing guitarists of the time such as Steve Hackett, Robert Fripp, Pat Metheny all started using the Roland GR500 or its subsequent releases. One guitarist who I want to specifically highlight is Adrian Ballou from King Crimson, Talking Heads, David Bowie, Frank Zappa. The dudes played for literally everyone. It's actually insane. I really think that Adrian Ballou was the reason why I became interested in the GR55. I'm a huge fan of his work with King Crimson and he's overall one of my favorite guitarists. He's such a unique player and the way that he uses synth pedals and pedals in general to me is super inspiring. I still look up to Adrian Ballou and Robert Fripp to this day. And on a bit of a side note, Discipline to me is the best King Crimson album and you can't change my mind. Getting back on subject, I found this really interesting clip of Adrian Ballou explaining guitar synth pedals that I thought would be really cool to include in here because he really sums them up perfectly in my opinion. Check it out. It increases the range of the guitar, allows you to play higher or lower, allows you more voices to the guitar, allows you more tonal color, and as a composer's tool, it's wonderful for creating uh, your own small orchestra. Since the 1970s, guitar synth pedals have come a long way. Companies such as Maris and Electro Harmonics continue to push the envelope with their pedals. Electro Harmonics in particular has released a ton of synth-inspired pedals, such as Mellotron pedals, synth pedals, string pedals, Hammond B3 organ pedals, you name it, they probably have done it. It's really cool to look back at how much progress has been made in over 50 years. But alright, let's check out my first impressions. All right, so I just got back from Long McQuaid and I got the Boss SY1 on my board. I've never used it before, so I'm excited to hear how it sounds. So let's just check out what the first sound is on here. Overall, I'm impressed I can handle more than one note at once and not get that weird digitally kind of pitch effect that happens sometimes with kind of synths. I can't, I don't really know how to describe it, but you'll hear it in like synth guitar pedals or like when a pedal does a pitch effect.
Yeah, this spell is sick. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. Um, I'm going to put in the UAD Dream now, and I'm going to use that as my amp sound. And we'll see how the pedal does with that. So give me one second here. Overall, I'm blown away. That sounded really good direct, but it also sounded really good in front of the UAD Dream. I didn't think it would sound good in front of an amp simulator, but it really did. This pedal is great. I feel really inspired playing it. I really love how it works with my other pedals, especially my delay pedals. I could definitely see myself getting one of these pedals later on and using it with my band because it really fills out my sound nicely. I'm really looking forward to messing around with this pedal throughout the week and writing the song for this video. All right, the time has finally come. It's time to make some music with the Boss SY1. My goal is to somehow use the Boss SY1 for all the sounds except for the drum sounds. Sometimes I'm going to run the pedal directly into my interface, other times I'm going to run the pedal through my UAD Dream, and other times I'm going to run it through different pedals on my board. I'll make sure to make note of it. I'm really excited to try this out. I've had the pedal now for about six days, and I feel pretty confident with it. So yeah, let's get to writing. Okay, so I'm just getting set up for recording, and I'll be honest, I don't have a vibe or anything that I'm trying to go for with this song yet. So. I'm just gonna mess around with the pedal a bit and get some sounds and just kind of go from there and see what I can figure out. I kind of like that chord progression. All right, I'm gonna try to record the first track and then I'm gonna do some drums and kind of work backwards. I dialed up a bass sound for this song. I'll have the settings on the screen. Um, this is still going direct in for it, but let's see how this works with the context of the song. Cheers. Oddly enough, I really like that goofy sound, so I'm gonna put the UAD Dream back on my board and run the boss synth through that so I can use an amp sound. So give me a second here. Okay, kinda like that sound. Okay, this is for the verse part. Now I'm gonna try to find a sound that complements that sound. So I wanna double the guitar part. So I can work something in with that.
I want this last chorus to hit harder and be a little bit heavier sounding, so I'm going to mess with some distortion sounds. Alright, I'm laying down another guitar track. A slightly different synth sound, still in the pad setting. It's kind of my favorite. Going into the Dream, Line 60 L4. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try lay on quickly some extra synth parts at the beginning. And this song's pretty much done. Well, the time has come. The Boss SY1 is off my board and head back to Long and McQuaid. So let's talk about the pedal a little bit more. So what did I like about this pedal? The first thing obviously is the sounds. Whether I was recording directly into my computer or through my UAD Dream, it really sounded cool. With the UAD Dream, I liked blending in the dry guitar signal and the affected signal and adding some delays and reverbs. And I created this huge sound that I can't even really describe. It had some really unique sonic characteristics that I thought would be really cool to use in a band context. There's honestly so many great sounds in this pedal, and unfortunately I only had a week to try it out. So I really honed in on the pad and the organ sounds. But I guarantee you can find amazing sounds in all the different sound categories. Another thing I loved about this pedal is that it's a boss pedal, and it's built really well. You know it's going to be reliable, and it just is great, and it looks cool too. The only complaint I have about this pedal, and honestly it's such a minor thing, and it's not even really a complaint, but I just wish there was just more knobs on it to control all the features. I know Boss makes bigger versions of this pedal with more controls and more functionality, and obviously they had to fit all those brains into a small comp 
compact enclosure, but I just wish there's a few more knobs on there with a little bit more flexibility. But honestly, I don't even know if I could call that a complaint. That's more so me just being greedy. So now it's time for me to answer those questions I had at the beginning of the video. The first being, did I find this pedal inspirational? The answer is yes. When I was messing around with this pedal, I had so much fun and I felt so creative with it. The sounds in this pedal really opened my ears and I felt like I was writing music that I normally wouldn't write, which is awesome. Did the pedal work good with my workflow? Yes. I was worried about this one a little bit, but honestly, it worked really great. During this whole process, I realized how much I love using pedals to create effects rather than using plugins later. I don't know if it's because I physically get to move the knobs and hear the results right away, but I just really like that. And honestly, I think I'm gonna be looking at my pedal board a little bit differently now. A related question to that is, would I put this pedal on my pedal board? And the answer is yes, but with a caveat. I wouldn't put the pedal on until I fully understood how it worked. I tried using it at band practice the other week, and honestly, it didn't go well at all. But I feel like if I dialed in the sound, it would work really well. So yes, I think it'd be really cool to have on a pedal board. And finally, it's time to answer the last question. Are synth pedals a gimmick? To me, they are not. You can do so much with these pedals. I think they're really great, and I think they're really inspiring. And to me, if a pedal is inspiring, it's probably not a gimmick. But I want to hear from you. What do you think of synth guitar pedals? Do you own them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Let me know in the comments down below and let's have a discussion. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the song in it. And if you'd like to see more videos of me just strictly working on music, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. My goal is to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this year, and I really think we can do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Kolji, and I'll see you in the next one.